In my previous videos, I took you to four coastal castles in China and told you the stories behind them from the sea ban in the 14th century to the evacuation in the 17th century. In this video, I'll take you to another coastal castle in Zhejiang province and let's have a glimpse of the post-evacuation life there. When the coastal residents moved back home 30 years after they were evacuated, they spent 10 years to rebuild the castle. As trade resumed in coastal regions, the unique geographical location made this castle a busy commercial town. Shipu Castle is located in the south of the Xiangshan Peninsula, which historically belongs to Ningbo municipality. There were four coastal castles in this peninsula. Usually, one castle had one unit of troops of around 1,230 inside. But in the Shipu Castle, two units of troops were stationed here, which reflected its importance. This high-ranking castle, which the other three reported to, had four units of troops inside. Altogether, there were eight units of troops stationed in the Xiangshan Peninsula, that's about the size of 10,000. The Shipu Castle is located in a plateau by the seashore. A path made of stone steps leads to the castle. Here is the castle, and this is the entrance to the enclosure outside the southern gate. The southern gate had actually been demolished and was rebuilt in 2004, but the sockets of the original gate and the stones around them remain in the same place. In every one of these coastal military bases, there is a sculpture of General Qi Jiguang. General Qi Jiguang has become an icon of the anti-piracy battles. Remember that Normandy landing-like event happened in the 16th century, I told you in earlier videos. It highly probably happened in the Xiangshan Peninsula because the first castle bridged by pirates was this higher-ranking castle with four units of troops stationed inside. Imagine how many vessels and pirates landed in the coast. Right inside the southern gate, there is a palace of Emperor Guan. What's that for? At the entrance is a stage. The temple is behind these seats facing the stage. It's said this temple could date back to the time when the castle was constructed in the 14th century. In Chinese folk religion, Guan was a deity who was regarded as a god of war, so it's normal to build a temple for him. But I don't believe it was like this in the beginning. Who has the moon to enjoy opera and drink tea when pirates would arrive anytime? It should be just a small temple as in other coastal castles. The current layout is a club type of place that was popular in commercial towns during the Ming and Qing dynasties. It's a combination of a religious temple, a tea house, an opera stage, and was used for social gathering. The expansion and modification of the temple signified that Shipu had turned from a coastal castle to a commercial town. The location of the southern gate is very interesting. It's on the summit of a hill. The castle was built on the flatter side of the slope. The street gently goes down on the slope. As you can see, the houses here are 
you are all built with wooden structures, once there is a fire, it's gonna be spreading very quickly. So this kind of wood is for stopping the fire. And it's built every 50 meters. Ahead is a cloth store. In particular, it sold silk. Silk products from China were very popular in the West, and Zhejiang province historically has been a major center for silk production. It was natural to open a silk store in Shipu Castle. Not far away, there is another fire stopping wall. Below it was the Qianzhuang in the Qin Dynasty. In today's financial terminology, it's a draft bank. To facilitate the transfer of money, which was in form of silver ingots, Shanxi merchants created a sophisticated system and opened up branch banks across the country. Like other coastal castles, there are a lot of small routes in Shipu Castle. Let's take a look at this one. Seems like there are still residents living inside. This was the office of an important bureau related to anti-piracy. This was a drugstore. A bamboo weaved basket is hand from the eve. It's a local tradition. The store mainly sold Chinese herbal medicine. It also sold a type of special formulated plaster. This is the second floor of the drugstore. It was a local tradition to pass the exclusive prescription of the plaster to the daughter-in-law of the family. In old times, women had to keep a distance from men, so she delivered the plasters to customers from the second floor with that basket. During the Ming and Qing dynasties, Chinese tea, silk, Porcelain products were very popular in Europe, but there was nothing produced in Europe that Chinese really wanted. To balance the trade deficit, the Brits introduced opium to China. This house now is a preventive education center for juveniles against the drug abuse. In the Qing Dynasty, it was an opium house. People came here to smoke opium together. It's not a proud history of the nation, but it's a lesson to be remembered. So the house was converted to exhibition for education on drugs and how to resist them. Here is the oath of staying away from drugs. Up in this pavilion, we can see the full picture of the street, from the temple of Emperor Guan to the drug house, layer and layer of eaves. The street bends here. That fire stopping wall is the end of this tourism place. Outside, there is a road whose foundation is made of very old stones. As I was working on this road, an idea flashed in my mind. It's not just a normal road. This. This. And the two together. Does it look familiar to you? I believe it was the ancient castle wall. The kernels are gone. Houses are built on both sides of the castle wall, making it look just like a normal road. Here there are some kernels. 
Obviously, the bricks are very new, but I think they're trying to say, "Hey, this was the castle wall." At the end of this road is the southern castle gate. I think it's very clear now. I did some research when I was editing this video because I want to convey the accurate information as much as possible. I found an article from the local newspaper published in 2019 recalling the ancient castle wall and the castle gate. My assumption is confirmed that road was the castle wall. What's more, there is an ancient map of the castle from local history book, which tells us what the castle originally looks like. This map, drawn several centuries ago, vividly depicts the steps up to and down from the southern gate. Next to the gate is the temple of Emperor Guan. These are beacon towers on the ridge of the mountain, which I've shown you in the Pudong Castle. This round structure looks really like the one in Puxi Castle, which is also near the seashore. There are two water gates in the castle wall. A canal flows from the mountain to the northern water gate, and goes through the castle to the southern water gate, from where it goes to the ocean. This solved my all-time puzzle of how a water gate works. It was used for vessels with supplies coming from the ocean to enter the castle. This map has everything I've seen in the four coastal castles I visit. Unfortunately, today these are all gone. But if you have watched all my videos about the coastal castles, let's restore it on the current map together, based on the information given in the article as well as our knowledge about coastal castles. The southern gate is here. It's where we enter the castle. This is the street with stores on both sides. This is the part of the castle wall I walked on. According to the article, these are where the northern and the western gates were located. The lake house at the northern gate is a reservoir built in the 1950s. Ignore that. The southern water gate was here. Roughly where this road starts. Then I have a wired assumption. This road from the seashore to the reservoir was that canal on the ancient map. What do you think? The northern water gate was by the current reservoir. The rest of the castle wall was roughly like this, and the eastern castle wall was on the slope of the hill, just like other Zhejiang castles I visited before. These were the two main roads in the castle. The Three Ladies Temple, that's in between the canal and the main street on the ancient map, remains in the same place today. I'm ninety percent positive about this map. Now look at this model. It starts to make sense. This is the southern water gate. This is the section of the castle wall I walked on. It goes up to the southern gate of the castle. But the model exaggerates the length of the street. The terminal should barely pass the southern water gate. If my version of the map is correct, then this street is not even on the ancient map. It was one of those small secondary roads. No idea how it developed into the most prosperous street in the castle. <laughs> Outside the southern gate, there is a road where the inhabitants were all migrants from Fujian Province. Actually, the name of the road is Fujian Road. These houses that are more than a century old were very nice houses, which means those Fujian migrants did make money in Shipu. It's another evidence of how prosperous the Shipu Castle was. When I returned to the seashore from the castle, the sky displayed the yin and the yang status, with half of the sky covered with clouds and the other half crystal blue. Shipu is a big fishing port in China. Ships were coming in and out. 
History records of fishing activities in Shipu date back to the Qing Dynasty over 2,000 years ago. The sea ban and the evacuation in history were absurd and unfair to the local community. All walk of life, including fishing, should be taken care of in a great country. In my next video, I'll take you to the last coastal castle in this series, one in Fujian Province. Unfortunately, all defensive structures of the castle have been demolished. Instead, there is a church and various Western-style houses in the castle. I'll take you to visit those houses and tell you the last part of the history of coastal residents. Migration to Southeast Asia. I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sets of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.